Hello everyone, hope you're having a great day today. Uh, so for the youth group on last Friday, we were doing, uh, for the youth group Devo, I've been doing the Books of Virtues, which has 10 chapters in it, and each chapter is a different virtue. Now last Friday, we did self-discipline. However, there's a lot of things in our life that we need to self-discipline, so I decided to go through two different points. On Friday's Devo, I talked about greed, and because that lesson was so long, I decided to put the other topic to, the, to today's lesson. So the topic today is controlling and disciplining our anger. Now first, we have to ask the question, is anger sinful? Well first, the anger, the emotion of anger isn't sinful. As Psalms 4, 4 verse A and Ephesians 4 verse 26 say, be angry and do not sin. So sin is, so anger is not sinful, or at least the emotion of anger isn't sinful. However, doing something in, in, in anger is very, very sinful. This is evident in many biblical stories. I have four just today, just off the top of my head. The first one is Moses not speaking to the rock and instead hitting it in anger, which was in Numbers chapter 20. Another one is Haman wanting to kill the Jews because of his anger toward Mordecai, which is throughout the book in Esther. Also, Peter cutting off Malachus's ear after uh, Judas rats out Jesus, which was in all four Gospels, but specifically said that Peter did it in John chapter 18, verse 10. And also, the most famous example of anger in the Bible, which is Cain killing Abel, which happened in Genesis chapter 4. Now, all those point, all those different uh, stories really show anger, but I want to talk about another story in the Book of Virtues. This story is called The Farmer and the Fox, and this really shows how anger-driven actions are just like the others and the consequences of anger-driven actions in our lives. So the story goes like this. The farmer, having a long grievance against a fox for robbing his poultry yard, caught him at last. Being determined to take full revenge, he tied some towel soaps in oil to the fox's tail and set it on fire. The fox, by a strange fatality, rushed through the fields of the farmer, and it was, it was the time of the wheat harvest, and the flames destroyed everything, every single crop. The farmer reaped nothing that year. I think this story really shows the consequences of anger-driven outbursts in our lives. And I think there's really two that both this story and the stories that I talked about in the Bible really show. The first consequence is you usually pay the price for your outburst. Haman was hung by the king on the gallows he made for Mordecai when he was in anger. Moses wasn't allowed to go to the promised land because he hit the rock in anger without speaking to it. Cain was cursed and became a fugitive and a wanderer. Even the farmer in the story had all his crops burnt, all because he wanted sweet, angry revenge for the fox. The second consequence is you don't feel relieved when you complete the outburst. Sometimes I feel people try to relieve themselves of anger by having an angry outburst or anger-driven actions, but this never helps. Peter's decision to cut off Malachus's ear didn't relieve any of his anger. And even the farmer example again, the farmer's decision to enact revenge made him more frustrated and angry than ever before. So now that we know the consequences of anger-driven outburst, well, how do we stop them? Well, I think the Bible says throughout it multiple times the one main thing to do, be slow to anger. As Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32a says, Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Later, uh, a little bit before in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29, it says there, Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has hasty temper exalts folly. So, how do we slow our anger? How do we become slower toward anger? Well, Psalms Chapter 4, verses 4 through 5, puts this perfectly. Psalms, chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart, in your bed, and be still. 
Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. This shows us really a good three-step guide to try to slow our anger. First, we need to get out of the situation. Whenever we're dealing with uh, anger towards somebody or anger just in general, it's good to get out of the situation. And as this says, going to your bedroom where your bed is, trying to go somewhere away from the person that you're angry toward. The second thing is to calm down in that room, to concentrate on yourself and meditate inside you, trying to really figure out why am I angry and trying to figure out uh, what's going on inside my head that makes me angry and why I'm angry toward this person. And the last thing we need to do is pray and let God help us through this anger. Meditating helps us create the, uh, helps create the why we are so angry, but we can't relieve that anger until we talk to God and talk to Him help, and let Him help us through this anger. A lot of times we can't go through anger on our own, but if we pray to God and let God help us through angry times in our life, He'll be able to help us. So that's anger within, that's anger, anger driven outburst, but what about anger within our heart? Well, as I said before, anger isn't a sin, or at least the emotion of anger isn't a sin. However, having anger in our hearts still isn't good. Even though it's not a sin, it's just not good. It can hurt you in the future. James chapter 1 verses 19 through 20 shows this to us. James chapter 1 verses 19 through 20. It says there, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of a man does not produce the righteousness of God. So here he's not talking about angry outbursts or angry driven actions. He's talking about the emotion in particular, the emotion in the hearts of people and how anger, although technically not a sin, it can still cause you to do bad things later on. Referring and showing it perfectly is verse 20, which I'll read again. For the, angry, for the anger of a man does not produce the righteousness of God. And I think this is really telling that, you know, inside anger can still hurt and make us unrighteous. So how do we stop this anger within our hearts? Well, I think there's one really important thing that is very easy to recognize, but is so hard to put into our lives. And this is reconciling with the person or people that we have anger towards. This, I think, you know, everybody has trouble doing this. Whenever you're in an angry mood, it's almost impossible sometimes to go to the person and try to go through the situation, try to um, resolve the situation in a good light. But I think Matthew chapter 5, verses 22 through 24, shows us a great example of how to do this. It says there, But I say to you, that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the, of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar, and go your way. First be reconciled with, to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. This is really showing how to do it in a perfect way. Whenever you're feeling anger, anger towards somebody, go to them and reconcile with them. Try to make it right so you don't have anger in your heart. Because revengeful and in, inward anger is wrong and can lead to terrible, sinful decisions in the future. Just like verse 22 says. Now, what do we learn throughout uh, this lesson? Well, first, anger-driven actions are very simple sinful and will hurt you way more than it can help. To stop these outbursts, we need to be slow to anger by getting out of the situation, going to a room to concentrate, and talking to God. We also learned that anger within isn't, isn't good at all, but it's not sinful. It's just not good at all. And to stop having anger within, reconcile. Talk to the person that we need, that we have the grievance with and figure out a better solution that'll help both him or her and us. 
As I started to research and study anger and greed for the past lesson, I found out that anger, that anger, both the emotion and the actions, are a lot like greed. See, both anger and greed start small with, a, with minimal consequences. However, if you don't control yourself, both will destroy your future in this world as well as, ch as, well as chances of getting to go to heaven. But if we control ourselves, we can stop our angry actions and feelings. By being slow to anger and reconciling with people we have anger towards, we will be able to not only to not only not destroy our future, but create a better future and a chance to go to heaven. Hope everyone's having a great day and uh, thank you for being with us.